Now we want to introduce the idea of acceleration. So the basic idea of acceleration is that acceleration will occur any time you have a change in your velocity, any time your velocity changes. Now remember that velocity is a vector and it has both magnitude and direction. So if your magnitude of your speed changes, suppose you're moving along a straight line and your speed is increasing, or you're moving along a straight line and you're slowing down, okay, in either case, you'll have acceleration. Or if your direction changes, right, if you're moving around a curve, or both, that's the most general uh, situation is when both are changing, like maybe you're going up a, an inclined ramp onto an interstate, right? You're gonna be accelerating, uh, your, your speed, I should say, is gonna be increasing and the direction you're moving will also be increasing. Now, acceleration has, again, like velocity, two basic definitions, your average, which is just the total change in velocity over some uh, time interval, and then the instantaneous acceleration is your change in velocity over a change in time, but for an extremely small uh, change in time, okay? So when you have a very small change in time. Now, I should note, okay, if your acceleration is uniform, okay, if your acceleration is not varying, then these two definitions will yield the same result. Okay, if you measure the acceleration either by using extremely small time intervals or large time intervals, these results will be the same. Most of the uh, accelerations we're going to experience in this course are going to be of the uniform type. Okay, but there may be situations, particularly for the higher classes, where um, that may not be the case. Okay, we may have to make a more subtle approach. Okay. Um, but as an example, okay, so let's suppose that we have a car and it starts from rest and it accelerates to a final velocity of 45 meters per second over a time interval of 10 seconds. What is the acceleration? To solve this problem, we're going to start to introduce the problem solving recipe that I like to use, okay? So the recipe that I like to use follows a few different steps. Number one, draw a diagram when and where appropriate. That's step one. Step two, Step two says list the variables in the problem. Step three is identify variable we want to solve for. And step four says uh, choose appropriate equations. And I'm going to put, I'm going to write my equation like that, okay? Choose your appropriate equation or equations, okay? For most of the problems, you'll only have to choose one or two equations to manipulate, all right? Um, so let's follow this recipe, and we're going to assume a straight line. Okay, we're going to assume a straight line. So, first, let's draw a diagram. And implicit in the first step, drawing a diagram, we also have to define our coordinate system. Okay, so I'm gonna let this be xi, and this will also be vi. This will be xf and vf, and my car is moving this direction, so I'm implicitly assuming that that is the positive x direction, okay? I'm implicitly assuming that's the positive x direction. Now, we have our diagram. Let's list our variables. We know that vi is zero. Now, here's a fundamental key, okay? We're gonna see this word a lot in uh, our story problems, and that is this word right here, rest. 
any time something starts from rest, we're going to assume that it starts with a velocity of zero. Okay, its initial velocity is going to be zero. The final velocity is given as 45 meters per second, and our time interval is 10 seconds. Now that we have our diagram, we've listed our initial information, right? We know that it starts from rest, its final velocity is 45 seconds over an interval of uh, 45 meters per second over a time interval of 10 seconds. And so we have listed all of the information. Now we want to identify what variable we're solving for. We want to find the acceleration. So the easiest thing to do here is going to be to just use the definition of acceleration. Technically, that should just be 0, 0.0. Now, 45 minus 0 divided by 10 is going to come out to be 4.5. And the units of velocity are meters per second. And we're going to divide that by seconds. which is the same thing as 4.5 meters per second squared. Now, here is what these units mean, okay? What does meters per second squared actually mean? So this is where a lot of students can get tripped up. Acceleration means your object is increasing in speed or decreasing in speed, okay, if we're assuming our motion is along a straight line. When you have a change in velocity along a straight line, you're either increasing your speed or decreasing your speed, okay? You can think about a car, and in this case, this would be like a car starting from a stoplight or a stop sign, and then um, uh, moving up to highway speeds, all right? Um, actually, it's a little bit faster than highway speeds. Maybe we're in Oklahoma or, or uh, Wyoming where there's not really, you know, uh, the speed limits on the highway might be 90 mile an hour or so. Anyway, so what this number means, 4.5 meters per second squared, okay, what that number means is for every second that our object moves, its speed increases by this value, 4.5. So after one second, it's going at 4.5 meters per second. After two seconds, it's going nine meters per second. After three seconds, it's moving at 13.5 meters per second. After four seconds, you get the idea, okay? Um, and then after 10 seconds, it's moving at 45. So our object's speed is increasing by this value per second, okay? Every second that it's moving, it's going to get that much faster, okay? So that's what the meters per second means. Okay, or meters per second squared means, okay? Now, there is one particular form of acceleration that we're going to use a lot through this semester, okay? And that is the acceleration due to Earth's free fall, okay? If I'm on Earth and I let an object go, it will fall at a uniform rate under the situations where I can neglect air resistance. Okay, and this was a very famous result from Galileo. All right, and so free fall. Galileo discovered that all objects, when you can neglect air resistance, fall at the same rate. Okay, and not only are they falling at the same uh, speed rate, they're falling at the same acceleration rate. And that rate that they fall at, we call the number g, and that is equivalent to 9.81 meters per second squared. So all objects, if I release something from rest and just let it fall through the air, okay, 
when I can neglect air resistance, they're going to fall at 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay. Um, now let's do an example with this. So suppose a rock is dropped So suppose a rock is dropped and I'm allowing it to fall for two seconds and I want to know what its speed is after those two seconds. So I drop it and then after one second it will be traveling at 9.81 meters per second squared and then after two seconds it'll be moving at um, 19.62 meters per second squared. Okay. Now uh, we're usually going to just use 9.81. Or I'm sorry, we're just going to use 9.8, okay? Um, and if you're really in a pinch, you can use 10, okay? Uh, your book and the problems in your book will often use 10. Um, we're going to formally, in the lectures, use 9.8, um, but the accepted global average Okay, it's going to be 9.81. We will talk more about where this number comes from once we get to actual gravity and talking about Newton's universal law of gravitation. But for now, we'll just call the gravity the free fall 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so once again, let's let's follow our recipe. If my rock is dropped, okay, I'm going to assume that my initial velocity vi. is zero, okay? I'm allowing it to fall through uh, Earth's gravitational field, so that tells me anytime you're dealing with a free fall problem, you're going to have your acceleration equal to G, okay? Anytime you're letting something fall, unless otherwise specified, like if we're on the moon or Mars or some exotic planet, the acceleration will always be g, okay, when we're letting things fall. And my time interval is 2.0 seconds. Okay? And finally, what is its speed after the 2 seconds it's fallen? That's asking what is the final velocity, okay? All right? So I've listed out my givens, and now I want to solve. So the last part of my problem-solving strategy is pick the appropriate equation. Well, the way you pick your appropriate equation is you look at what the variables are and how they're related, okay? And I know that from my acceleration equation, I have acceleration is equal to Vf minus Vi over delta t. So my acceleration equation relates all of these variables. So that's the equation I'm going to pick. All right, so I've picked my equation. And what I'm going to do now is solve algebraically for my VF. And then we'll plug our values in. I cannot stress this enough. You want to solve your problem algebraically first before you plug your values into your calculator and then having to carry those digits throughout all of your algebraic steps, okay? So, what we'll do is we're going to say that if I multiply both sides by delta t, then I'm going to get vf minus vi is equal to a delta t and it doesn't matter that I have delta t times a here because a times b is the same thing as b times a. Okay, so a times delta t is the same thing. It's just conventional to write it in this form. And then I add vi to both sides.
and now I've solved for the variable I'm looking for. And now I can plug in my values. I note that vi is 0, so it goes away. a is equal to g, which is 9.8 times 2 seconds, which gives me 19.6 meters per second squared. I hope that was helpful.